Oh, here we go. Come on, girl, go. You gotta go. You gotta go. We gotta get those eggs. Oh, yeah. Okay, guys, this is above my pay scale. That hits a lot harder than a snake I ever messed with. Woo, Matt, what'd you get me into? This is Australian swamps, mate. <laughs> Saltwater crocodile. No, girl, you're gonna have to back down just like a big python, because we're taking them. We're gonna make this thing. We need those for the greater good. There we go. Now we're gonna go around this way. Now the big holes where she can come up next, right? This is her second entrance. Yep. So behind me is pretty safe. And uh, there's the nest, you guys. Wait until you see this. Oh, there she is. Wait. Here she comes. Come on, girl, back up. Do I just push her back? Come on, back up, girl. She wants it, but I ain't giving it to her today, but... Go, go away. All right. Wow, this one's not like the ones that we were... Looking at the other day. No, this one here is much more aggressive. So look at this, guys. Wait until you see this. This one might be a bit rotten by the looks of it, mate. So this is what happens out here on the floodplain. So, oh, oh, there's some good eggs. She's laid a clutch. Unfortunately, they're all gone rotten. So this is what this is what happens. So oh, there's some good ones. There's a banded one right there. Okay, you guys. So it's not an all bad clutch, but a lot of them would die if this if we didn't take them. And this particular time, there's plenty of crocodiles. There's no, they're not endangered or threatened. Uh, this is just some research to see what's going on in the wild and how the eggs are hatching and fending and this season versus another season versus this area and that area. So what I'm doing here right now is the same thing I do with snakes. So we're gonna put some nesting material down that just like the python eggs, you can't let the eggs roll around. Just like I used to do with my python eggs, you mark the, mark the eggs, that's got a band, right? Is that but, one bad? Yeah, it's infertile, but we'll keep it. Just okay, do one mark, just one mark, one straight line on the oh, top, mate. Oh, all right. Yep. Okay, I, I should have known that. That's a fertile one right there. Yep. It's got a nice band. This one's got a nice band, so that's fertile. We're gonna stack them in here, and then, uh, and then they'll figure out the ratios and and all that, and put the GPS numbers in it. Okay, let's see here. Just take that pencil. We're gonna mark them all. We're gonna pull them. Hopefully she's not gonna attack us in the middle of it. She's disappeared. Does that mean she can come up behind me? <laughs> no, we're pretty safe here. This hole behind me isn't nothing. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm getting all these eggs, making sure they're all facing upright. We're gonna put, put them all in here on one layer and then we're gonna go over with some more bedding. We're collecting the infertiles and the fertiles. So there's a obviously completely rotten egg. Throw that out, mate. Yeah, we're gonna, it's so gone, it's gone, gone. There's not many good ones in there. Right, but... most of this nest got too hot already. Yeah. And uh, so this is part of the thing that we're, the research will keep an, an eye on. We're register, registered all information with the data, the location, and uh, let's see how this all works out. There's quite a few more eggs. See, that's an infertile egg right there. That's a fertile one. That's a fertile one, even though it's got a big dent in it. There's a messed up one, we'll count those at the end. Ooh, it's warm. It's really warm. So in the wild, it isn't so easy in the wild in real life. Most of these eggs will not make it, whereas if they're collected, and they can actually, a lot of them make it, and then therefore, it's able to, they're able to get all the research. That's an, probably already a cooked egg. There's two, two that are probably both bad, and that's still got a ban on it. We'll count these up when we get back, but we got, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven completely, completely rotting ones. And we're gonna take these other ones back and we're gonna see hopefully some crocs hatching. Let's go do this. Thanks, Matt, this is awesome. Now right. we gotta get out of this place. Yeah, well, it looks like she's left the nest. Let's hope she has. She's All not right. gonna do a jack in the box on us. <laughs> she could do. Oh. Man, okay, you guys, so there they are right in there. So we're gonna jump back on this swamp boat. We're gonna exit this little island and we're gonna see what else is out there. So you can see 
this one. Marked him there. That's fertile. This one's fertile, so you can see here and here. You right. can see that bit of a white line growing out. These eggs are going to take 90 days to hatch. And so, you know, we're collecting a lot of these eggs in the Northern Territory. Um, so all for a renewable resource. Um, some for farming, some for research. And, and there's a problem with too many crocs, correct? What's happened is since we started collecting crocodile eggs and the right. farming started happening, we've boosted our numbers from 4,000 back in the early uh, 80s up to about 150,000 in the wild. And you guys are trying to maintain it now, correct? Yeah, yeah. so that, that we've got a healthy population of crocodiles. We've got a great industry with collecting crocodile eggs. And you gather all the research. Yep. The cool part is, while they're doing all this, it funds the research so that the crocodiles will never be endangered, ever. It's kind of a win-win. It is, it is. The, uh, you know, it's a um, great resource for the indigenous on, on their land. You know, we've got so many communities that rely on us collecting their natural resources. So get a load of this, guys. The, the water buffalo they have will actually ruin their big, so they get out way inside and they start cutting canals all the way back to the ocean. And the canals, will end up ruining the resources on the interior because the salt water will roll up in there and destroy all the native plants, correct? That's, that's correct, yep. And so when you start managing animals and resources, there's a lot to it because you can't just erase one problem and then think it's going to correct itself. For, perfect, for instance, those cane toads. They were introduced for uh, the cane beetle right. in, in the cane fields, sugar cane fields, except the cane beetle lives at the top of the Tree, cane field. Right. And the toad did nothing for it except so, now it destroys every so sort of reptile. So we're on it, you know, it's a big ecosystem and so it's really important to keep track of what's going in the ecosystem and these croc eggs fund all that research mm. and so it's really an awesome, it's honestly it's a beautiful thing to see when things work together to a greater good. Oh it is, you know it's fantastic. I mean? And you know it's funny, I think the US, I don't know where, they, I think they might have started comping them because our, our cro alligators were actually endangered just a few years back and now they're collecting eggs, they're doing all the same stuff, the research, the money funds itself. It's, you know what, it's it's a win, win, and a win. A win for the animals. So yeah. anyway, this is incredible that you guys got to experience it. And hopefully, hopefully you're going to see a baby hatch. Check it out. You're not around for another couple of months. I'm not even <laughs> around to see those babies hatch. But I just happened to have talked to somebody at the research center that said that it might happen. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so yeah. we're living the dream. We're going to go with it. It's going to happen. So. Let's go, we'll, we'll have to do that tomorrow.